thank you for just opening our minds to what is out there and to really interrogate what one really wants to put out and is it really something that's already there. But I have a question about sustainability. Some of the institutions are not smoke and mirrors, but they don't have a way of keeping alive, even though what they're doing is really noble. And I'm aware of one or two there, and I'm just wondering mm -hmm. what can we learn from that and how do we rethink creatively right. to not fall into the same trap. Uh, that's a very good point, and probably it's something that I should add to this presentation, because as you say, you can, ha you can fit the bill that I laid out, but you can also evaporate like smoke. Um, and I've seen that happen also. Um, sustainability can happen by two means. One is that you lock in the sustainability, you lock in, in this case, usually funding, at the outset. You've got that, you know, that endowment that pays all of your salaries until the end of time, okay? That's a luxury. Essentially, nobody has it. Um, more frequently, and this is, this is the sort of thing that I think we're both referring to, more frequently, one has good ideas and good intentions, and one gets started. And you get started, and if you can you know, kind of catch that wave, you have the potential to get up to critical mass and become sustainable. And you're going to see four examples of initiatives that have achieved that, at least for the moment. You know, Kristalka told you about, I think it was 70% of our activity is, what percent of the BI activity is, is uh, grant funded, Chris? Was it 70? 66%. 66%. So that basically means, I mean, that, that it says a lot good about the BI in the sense that we bring in those grants. But you saw, we're not diversified. We depend on one single funding agency in largest part. We could be non-sustainable. I mean, if we hit a really bad economic situation, and if the National Science Foundation were really to take it on the chin, we'd probably have to let people go. And you know, universities are supposed to be forever. Hmm. So. <laughs> Um, of course, in the state of Kansas, you kind of wonder about that. Um, so I think that's, I think you make a very good point. It's, it's essentially another dimension that I should add to that, to, that, um, to that commentary. But sometimes you achieve sustainability by gambling, okay? I personally wouldn't counsel you guys to say, well, you know, First get your legislation in hand, then get your endowment in hand, then start work. Yeah, not a good idea, because you'll never start. So there has to be some risk taking, risk -taking in but yeah. yeah. Another question? Less. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah but let me come over there. Okay. I think one of the lessons might be don't form a partnership with one of these smoke and mirrors, um, national or international uh, in institutions. Do the research ahead of time to determine who is real and who is not. Who is just getting on a bandwagon? Say, a lot of people will now be getting on the if best bandwagon. And, and for example, my say that the paper, I may as well say this for you too, the paper that that town cited that said the original language in IPES really doesn't matter. The real environmental, the real um, essential biodiversity, essential biodiversity value is in monitoring selected species at selected places. The hell with this knowledge of the world's uh, biodiversity. It's no coincidence that IPES will be meeting, I think in a few months in October, to determine its initial work program. So these people are writing this specifically to get onto the bandwagon, and I predict if you look into their work, this is what they do. 
And so they're just trying, you know, to uh, push that agenda. And I predict we'll see a whole bunch of papers that will try and push their own agendas. Um, form alliances with the people that are true, with the people that are really true to the mission. And don't play the smoke and mirrors. But that's not so easy to do necessarily. It's very true. It's very true. Yeah. Especially it's in developing countries. I mean, these, sometimes these funds come in with even agendas just to get rid of it or whatever, and then you've got a problem. Correct. Absolutely. No, you're perfectly correct. Less. I'm going to come over there. That's essentially what I was going to say. You sitting close to the center of the universe can't tell what smoke and mirrors and what's genuine. You know, sitting at the southern tip of Africa, it's, or anywhere in Africa, it's really quite difficult to, uh, to, to, to make these judgments. And I've certainly been sucked into some uh, pretty awful decisions as, I, as I've seen. I, I think we all have which is to say sometimes the smoke gets pretty substantive yeah. and the mirrors look pretty realistic. Yeah. Um, you know, the rule of thumb, I think, is if it looks like a dead fish and if it smells like a dead fish, you should assume that it is a dead fish. The internet really helps. You know, you have access to the same, at least outward pool of, of information that one does in the US or in Europe. Oftentimes, the really critical thing is meeting people in person. Yeah. And that's, you know, you're, you're completely right. You can be at the far end of, of the world and at the University of Kansas, where we're in the middle of everything and far from everything. You can be in South Africa. Um, but it is a challenge. And, and I fully appreciate that sometimes you form a partnership and you agree on some goals and some steps towards those goals and you realize that your partner is not doing anything. And you realize, oh, that's smoke and mirrors. <laughs> so it happens. Um, I think a really critical thing is simply to be aware of the existence of smoke and mirrors and bullshit and avoid it. You know, at least try to detect them. Ask the questions. Huh, that's interesting. Where can I download those data? Oh, I can't. Why not? Okay, that sort of thing. You know, I, I tend to put a, I, I tend to carry a dumb face around a lot of the time. Sometimes it's really dumb, but sometimes I'm playing dumb because I honestly want to see, oh, where is that download button? And I'm pretty sure it's not there. And oh, it's not there. And then my bullshit alarms go off. Flashing red lights. You exactly. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube has much worse than that. <laughs>